A Critical Analysis of Mega Man, published by Capcom in 1987. Mega Man is a single-player 2D side-scrolling platformer, where the player is tasked with racing to the end of each level while defeating various enemies and avoiding environmental hazards to reach and defeat the stage's end boss all the way up to ultimately beating the main antagonist, or die trying. The player is able to accomplish this by remotely controlling the main character Mega Man by moving left or right and climbing up or down, jumping, and firing any of the weapons the player has come to acquire. Though all weapons besides the starting one will require ammo to fire, which can be replenished through ammo drops. If the player manages to fall into a hazard or off screen, or lose all their health, they will lose a life, and with enough lives lost, then the game. Health can be replenished by picking up life drops, and game over can be deterred by collecting extra lives. Mega Man consists of two main mechanics. The main portions of a level, which involves series of platforming puzzles, and the end of the level, which consists of a single boss fight. Though the 2D side-scrolling platformer was already an established genre, Mega Man was made famous by the difficulty at which it did it, often threatening the player with instant death from just a single misstep. For the boss design, Capcom took a unique twist on how the boss battles could be done. Unlike most games at that time, which only offered a single linear route for the game, Mega Man allows the players to select any of the levels, aside from Dr. Wily's Castle, to play right from the start, and choose the game progression in the order they want. This unique gameplay aspect of the time is coupled with a rock-paper-scissors-like system, in which the bosses of the level that can be chosen from the start are weak to some weapon that one of the other bosses possess. By clearing that level first to get the weapon this boss is weak to, this boss fight simply becomes a cakewalk. The first level of Dr. Wily's Castle is a great example of the various platforming elements of the game, as well as presenting several situations to show the usefulness of the various weapons Mega Man has come to possess from the various bosses that have been defeated. Right from the start, the level offers a challenging battle to the player, forcing confrontation against several big eyes that try to stomp the player while allowing very little room to pass, making it very likely that the player will lose most of their health in the beginning area. Right after the big eyes, the player gets a chance for some creative weapon usage. First, the player gets by the crates by either chucking them with super arm or destroying them with thunder beam. Then the player faces several fire pillars. If the player is clever, they can use ice beam to freeze them, making it a simple task. After the previous battle, leaving the player somewhat weakened, a health drop is left for the player, but not without risk. If the player isn't careful, they could fall into the spikes below, instantly losing a life. Another room with a health drop, but rather than spikes, annoying fleas threaten damage within the narrow corridor with the crates blocking the path as well. This time, however, the player must use Thunder Beam in order to destroy the higher blocks, then use the platform creator to reach the health drop. From here, the player is free to choose once again between using the Super Arm or the Thunder Beam to clear the lower crates that block the forward path. Here the player is presented with another platforming challenge. The player must make a few jumps over death spikes while avoiding swerving killer bullets. The biggest challenge in this task is that by destroying a killer bullet at too close of a range will hit the player with an explosion, knocking them backwards. Constantly threatening the player with instant death, this room forces the player to make their way across several footholders as they fly around aimlessly shooting. If the player isn't careful, they will either hit the spikes on the ceiling or the floor, though the player is rewarded with some energy for their weapons as consolation. Here, the player is required to use the platform creator in order to create their own way through the room and reach the ladder on the other side to finally meet the boss of the stage after a small and uneventful room. Skipping into the fight a bit, the Yellow Devil, or sometimes referred to as the Cyclops, is often considered the most difficult boss in the game, requiring the player to constantly make a series of jumps to dodge getting hit by the pieces of the boss, only to end up being able to get a single hit in after the dodging sequence is over. This kind of required dodging skills and patience in learning the boss's pattern are some of the key aspects of this game and its continuing series. Mega Man has become one of the largest game franchises ever, counting more than 100 titles, from the 9 games in the main series to several side series such as Mega Man X, Mega Man Zero, Mega Man ZX, Mega Man Legends, Mega Man Battle Network, and Mega Man Star Force, not to mention a bunch of one-timers. In total, the Mega Man franchise has sold well over 28 million units. With such a huge franchise, it's not surprising that there are tons of people who themselves 
create all varieties of fan work, like music, art, cosplay, comics, or even films.